Hello everyone at Personal Branding Blog. I'm David Seitman Garland from TheRiseToTheTop.com. Big personal branding question that gets asked all the time is these big personal brands that you see like even the stereotypical ones like Oprah or the internet ones like Gary Vaynerchuk, Chris Brogan. How quickly did they become a success? Because it appears that they just came flying onto the scene overnight, but we all know that isn't true. So I caught up with someone that really appears like an overnight success to tell you a little bit about how hard her journey's been as an entrepreneur, and that's the millionaire matchmaker, Patty Stanger from Bravo TV, and I asked Patty, tell us the story, how long did it take to get a TV show? How did the show happen? I mean, the show is well, one of our favorite things. The show happened because of me. Right. Because of me. Well, obviously, it, it didn't come happen on. because be it didn't happen yeah. because the network just made a ding, ding, ding phone call. For nine years, the networks have been coming to me, and it was never right. It mm -hmm. was either I was on a holding contract with ABC originally, which I was really excited about, but then the war broke out and pushed mm -hmm. us back. You know, it was during the Susan Line uh, Lloyd era, and the presidents were falling like flies. And it was not when ABC had Desperate Housewives and became the phenomenon it is. Um, cable started to boom. And the hmm. docu-soap, which is what I'm considered, I'm considered formatted docu-soap. Docu-soap, I we, like that. We wrap in an hour, you, you get your full story, there's an arc in the middle of the show, but we get it all in one hour. We don't continuously go like right. Housewives of Orange County or New York or whatever. So there was no home for us. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like you could go to E! or you could go to TLC, there wasn't anything. Bravo became the docu-soap network, and it was mm -hmm. the perfect timing because I had done another little DVD kind of thing for someone else. They saw it and they offered me the deal. But I had people like Ryan Seacrest and Simon Cowell were my partners at one time. I mean, I had a lot of people interested in doing this. The only thing I didn't want to do was Gold Diggers or Us. We don't allow sure. Gold Diggers in the service. So I wouldn't go down Trashy Alley. And that was one of the reasons why I waited for the right opportunity and the right deal to come along. Nice. I like Trashy Alley. And just, just to give us a scope of sort of where you were um, you were thinking about that is from the from the start to finish. So going on Bravo, you know, like where it ended up. When how many years was that from the first idea of saying here come some networks for you to when it actually appeared? Because you know for, to the audience at home, of course it looks overnight, right? Okay. And we all know it doesn't it doesn't well, work that way. It's not overnight. Uh, traditionally, Survivor was on the air. Dr. Drew was um, not Dr. Drew who does the drug intervention, but regular Dr. Drew um, was kind of becoming the extra correspondent. He was like the first one out in the field. So it was an average Joe mm -hmm. that would actually talk about things things on entertainment and we got calls for me to be on Extra and Access Hollywood. So that was kind of like the starting point. But then a little girl named Anna Nicole called me and said, would you like to be on my show on E! and mix, fix me up? And oh, that's when I started to go off the radar. And she was heavy during that period. I would have coached her more. Um, she definitely you know, had a lot of problems, but I really adored her. And there was a good side to her inside. People don't really see the soft side of Anna Nicole. It's like all you know, smoke and mirrors. And that was really the tipping point. I mean, you know, Kathy Griffin and I were on her Christmas special, holding each other because it was all like creepy people. Like we looked like it looked right. like Howard Stern's, uh, you know, entourage. Yeah. Very strange people. And we're like, we're the only normal people here. And it was a really exciting time. But it took nine years from the first inquiry from Telepictures all the way to the present at Bravo. Nine years That's to get on the air. But I held out and I. I kept showing up for TV appearances, and I kept showing up for magazine articles, and I, I basically spun it as an ex, as an expert, because there was mm. nobody talking about dating. There's 110 million single people in the United States, okay, and no one's getting po people from point A to point D. And I hope you enjoyed that glimpse into Patty Stanger, and I think it's a big lesson for all of us entrepreneurs and people that are building personal brands. That hey, it's building blocks. It takes time. It takes a lot of effort. And uh, I'll see you next time. I'm David Seitman Garland from TheRiseToTheTop.com.